Well, in this session, we're going to look at functional literacy. So what does this mean? This approach to learning to read and write focuses on the types of texts that schools use uh, to teach and evaluate students. And this includes also the types of texts that schools believe students need to communicate with the broader world. That is, to function successfully in making meaning and understanding meaning when they read and write across a variety of different sources. We're now on to discuss what we're characterising as a third major paradigm of literacy pedagogy. Um, so in the history of literacy pedagogy, there have been these quite different approaches. Yes, it's all about literacy, but the flavour of these approaches is different in some quite important ways. And we call this approach functional literacy pedagogy. So, um, and, and perhaps the, the most significant uh, sources of this is the, the work of a professor of linguistics at Sydney University for many years, uh, Michael Halliday, and some of his um, uh, you know, colleagues um, in the years that have uh, followed the invention of this, uh, this kind of approach, uh, particularly Jim Martin, Gunter Kress, and also Mary and I have been involved in this. It's kind of morphed over the years into the multiliteracies approach, or some aspects of it have morphed into the multiliteracies approach, just some aspects. Um, so what, what this does is that it's very much about learning the genres of school success and social power. So in other words, uh, what are these, um, you know, what are these genres uh, and, and, you know, what does literacy give us? And it's about being explicit about these. But unlike didactic pedagogy, which tends to start with the little bits and pieces and put the jigsaw puzzle pieces together and maybe never actually end up with a full picture, to be quite frank, um, what it does, it starts with the question of what's the purpose of the text and then how does the text vary because the purposes are different. So it starts with the whole text and its purpose and it moves, it moves down. Now, one of the um, aspects of this that we want to say is, look, there are some very important insights in this, but we also want to recruit some of the other aspects of the insights of the other pedagogies that we're also discussing, didactic, authentic, and in the next um, section, the next video, um, we're talking about uh, critical approaches to literacy pedagogy. Functional literacy wants students to understand the reason why texts exist. Uh, it then wants them to understand how the reasons for making particular texts shapes and determines the design or the structure of the text. So, unlike didactic approaches to literacy, it doesn't focus on rules or breaking language down its parts. Instead, it starts with two key questions. What is the purpose of my writing? and what kind of structure works best for that purpose. Students are thus taught to distinguish different types of texts on the basis of purpose, and then to work out the differences in the structure and to really understand how meaning is linked to the way in which the text is structured. Here are some examples of different types of texts. Uh, a news article um, uh, presents information, news in the world, and it often reports from different perspectives, you know, in order to give a kind of a, a balanced view of, of, of what's happening in the world. That's a typical way a newspaper article goes. A fable is a story that has a moral. A recipe is a, a, a list of ingredients and the steps that are required to produce a particular uh, item of cooking. Um, a science report might be factual information about something in the world uh, which is useful to you in your job or your learning. So these are, in fact, incredibly different kinds of written text. Um, and the question is, what, how are these written texts formed? Uh, what are their rules? Um, what's their structure? So what does this look in a classroom? Well, first, in terms of content, the kind of content that teachers typically use when they involve uh, this approach, the functional approach, is the writing of the subjects. So how do historians write? How do scientists write? How do journalists? How do doctors write? What kinds of texts do these uh, people produce? But we're looking at the discipline, right? Uh, the kind of writing that is appropriate to those disciplines and others. 
So what happens in curriculum? How, how is the curriculum organised? Um, models of these types of writing are uh, developed and then frameworks for enabling students to reproduce them. If we go to instructional activity, what kind of activities are teachers and students involved in? Well, we have a series of cycles of directed modelling, modelling a, a, a history, a, a text from history or a scientific report. And then we have teacher-guided joint constructions based on the framework that the model provides, and that eventually leads to the scaffolding of independent writing. Along the way, of course, not only do uh, teachers and students look at the whole structure of the text and the relationship of that to meaning, they then go deeper into word choices and grammar and points of view. But they start with the purpose and the whole uh, text and uh, the way it's designed. So what is the link between writing and learning? Uh, in this kind of framework for uh, teaching literacy, what is taught in schools, the kind of writing that is taught in schools uh, is meant to prepare learners for the real world of writing uh, and the purposes that writing exists beyond the classroom. What happens in, um, uh, in functional literacy pedagogy is the pedagogy works roughly like this. Here's a model text, so we might read a model text. And let's, as a class, deconstruct that model text. What are the components of the text? And in a moment, I'm going to do a bit of that deconstruction to give you some examples of that. Uh, then what we do as a class is, as a whole class, we jointly construct a text. In other words, the teacher works with you to construct a text. And then after that, you will be able to independently create a text of your own because you've got the sense of how the text is fabricated. So I'm going to go through some examples of these kinds of texts. And when we say that you know functional literacy pedagogy is about powerful texts in school, in fact, it's not just the subject of English, English language arts, that uh, or, um, or language learning or, or literacy narrowly conceived, where these kinds of texts appear. Uh, they appear in science in the form of a report. So what a report does, a science report does, it provides structured information uh, about the natural world, for example, uh, based on information. So it's informationally focused. Um, that in English, we might write narratives, things which tell a story. They have characters and settings, and there's a complication at a certain point, and there's a resolution of the story at the end. And in history, we might mount an argument, which is, what were the causes of the First World War? Well, you know, this might be a cause, and that might be a cause. We make a number of claims about the, the causes, and we might support those causes with historical evidence. And at the end, we might draw an interpretive conclusion. So these are, uh, if you like, ways of representing knowledge, not just uh, literacy knowledge as form within uh, the literacy class, but knowledge in other subject areas as well. And in that sense, these are incredibly powerful and important parts of learning at school, particularly from about you know the uh, you know the middle school through to the high school.